ಓಯತಿರಾಜಾ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದಸೂರ ಸಚ್ಚಿತ್ಸುಖಸ್ವಾಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿಪಹಾರಿಣೆ so we are going to see an interesting passage today that is from page number 54 second paragraph swami vivekananda says we enter into creation and then for us it becomes living things are dead in themselves only we give them life and then like fools we turn around and are afraid of them or enjoy them so we enter into this creation and it becomes a living for us and ironically some ji says we are like fools we are either afraid of the of this matter or we enjoy them so this is a conflict between the matter and the spirit so we have entered into this creation this consciousness and then uh, finally ironically like some ji says like fools we turn around and are afraid of them or enjoy them so this is the conflict between the matter and the spirit so swami vivekananda has explained on many occasions that the matter is always subordinate to the spirit so this is one of the uh, core concepts that we have to understand in vedanta that the atman or the brahman is supreme so the atman is one or uh, the brahman is one there is no duality that exists whereas only in this matter we find all the conflicts as soon as we enter into this creation and as soon as we enter into this maya we find all the conflicts existing in the present life but the absolute is one so swami ji says this absolute having entered into this creation and having entered into this life and because of this maya we are afraid of this matter or he says swami ji says we enjoy them so we are afraid of matter in the sense that we identify ourselves with this body and uh, and once this body becomes old and once it is subjected to all uh, the things which the body is subject to we become afraid of it or with the help of this body we enjoy this world so this is the conflict and continuing this passage swami vivekananda says be not like certain fisher women who caught in a storm on their way home from market took refuge in the house of a florist they were lodged for the night in a room next to the garden where the air was full of the fragrance of flowers in vain did they try to rest until one of their number suggested that they wet their fishy baskets and place them near their heads then they all fell into a sound sleep so swami vivekananda here is explaining a small story uh, the story uh, is one of the parables of shri ramakrishna so this story is very interesting uh, the story goes like this so a group of fisher women they go to the market to sell fish and while returning they were caught in a storm so this is the original story this is how it goes and they they take shelter uh, in a house of a florist florist is a person who sells flowers so they take refuge or they take shelter in the house of the florist but when they sleep uh, in the house of the florist they feel very uncomfortable because in their homes uh, they used to sleep in that particular environment but in the house of the florist the environment they find it is different it is full of uh, uh, the fragrance of the flowers so these fisher women they uh, they got disturbed by the 
by the fragrance of the flower so this is the parable shri ram krishna himself has told and uh, and uh, since they could not sleep comfortably in the room one of the fisher women uh, she suggested so we have this fish basket with us so let us wet this basket so that it produces the scent of the fish so this scent of the fish it makes them comfortable so that they can fall asleep so in their homes they are habituated with the scent of uh, uh the scent of the fish but here in, in the house of the florist they feel uncomfortable with the fragrance of the flowers so one of them is suggesting so let us wet this basket and let it produce that scent of the fish and let us sleep so this suggestion was implemented and finally and they felt a sound sleep so this reference is uh, very apt in our day to day life so most of the times we find uh that we are comfortable with our own samskaras or we are comfortable with our own habits we don't want to quit them or we don't want to change them uh so we are accustomed or we are habituated we have built our life in such a way that uh, how much are the place we are put into in how much are a good place or just like uh, the place of the florist here which is given as a reference here which is given as an example here but as soon as we are removed from this place or as soon as we find discomfort in this particular place we surround ourselves with our own samskaras again so for example uh, now we are listening to this lecture here we are listening we are reading this inspired talks of swami vivekananda but see if uh, once we go to our home once we settle ourselves again we surround ourselves with our own peculiar habits and union environment we take our mobile phones and we watch our programs uh which are very interesting to us which we feel very interesting uh, to us so this is the uh, uh i would say an impediment in spiritual life so this is the obstacle in uh, spiritual life so these samskaras they prevent us from proceeding forward and these samskaras are self built we build ourselves all these samskaras we put obstacles to ourselves and finally we say i could not overcome this problem so we have created all the samskaras all our troubles all our habits and finally we say we could not come out of it so this is the situation we are in so this is what swami vivekananda is referring here uh, using the parable of shri ram krishna here so very interesting parable it is a very thoughtful uh, par- parable and we should all think about it we should all think about like what samskaras are preventing us uh, in further progress of our spiritual life what we are surrounded with and what are the particular or peculiar habits that we have created in our daily lives so we must all introspect all these things and then we have to find a solution for ourselves so continuing with the passage swami vivekananda says the world is our fish basket we must not depend on it for enjoyment those who do or the tamasic or the bond then there are the rajasic or the egoistical who talk always about i i they do good work sometimes and may be spiritual but the highest are the satvikas the introspective those who live only in the self so these three qualities tamas rajas and sattva are in everyone and different ones predominate at different times so the point is that swami vivekananda says so all this attraction for the world all this the samskaras or the habits that we have formed in our lives are due to the three gunas which is prevailing in us so in every human being there is a composition of three gunas that is sattva rajas and tamas sattva is purity sattva is equilibrium sattva is calmness whereas rajas is a kind of action oriented or which which revolves around a particular object for example there is a particular object and uh, 
I impose or I project my own self upon that particular object, thereby creating happiness, misery, thereby creating uh, enjoyment and misery. So all these dualities, all these dualities is uh, is due to the action of rajas. So attachment, hatred, happiness, misery. Suppose if we experience ups and downs in life, know for sure that we are under this rajas. So all these gunas they operate in every human being and the levels differ from each other. For example, in a certain person, the sattva guna may be predominant, whereas rajas and tamas may be small in comparison to that. And for example, in certain other persons, the rajas may be more when compared to sattva and tamas and in again certain other people we find the tamoguna is more when compared to rajas and sattva. So tamoguna is very dangerous. Tamoguna is kind of the gunas that exist only uh, in animals and in certain type of human beings. So tamoguna, as we see uh, how the animals they behave, it is the same. So rajas is action or activity bound guna which produces results in the form of happiness or misery. And again, Sattva Guna, which is pure, uh, which uh, creates this equilibrium, which creates this balance, which creates all the spiritual qualities. So Swami Vivekananda says that, so this, um, the life we have created is a result of the three Gunas, is a result of the three Gunas that, uh, that, that, uh, that is an operation in us. So the challenge in spiritual life is, one of the key challenges is to maintain the quality of sattva in our daily lives. So that is a key. Suppose if we do not uh, maintain uh, the sattva guna in our life or uh, we don't practice or if we don't deliberately put into practice uh, this quality of maintaining the sattva, then what happens? So life uh, will be like it will be full of uh, mental oscillation or uh, uh, we desire to do something and we do something else. We promise something and we fail to keep our promises or, or the mind will be constantly oscillating without any grip or without any, um, uh, without any goal we can say. The mind continuously wavers as a result if we don't maintain this particular satoguna. Uh, for example, uh, we tell to a particular person that I will do this work at a particular time, but as soon as we give the promise, we forget all about it and then we drift apart and sometimes we don't promise a particular work and then we keep on doing that particular work. So it will be a jumble of confusion. Suppose if we don't uh, practice or if we don't maintain the spiritual equilibrium, life is going to be a jumble of confusion. We, we will not be... Uh, we will not take any certain decisions at any particular moment in our life. So we will be failing in this, we will be failing in this decision making process. So at a particular juncture or at a particular moment, we will, do, will not be able to uh, take exact decision or we will not be able to judge that particular situation correctly. So this is the problem that occurs if we do not maintain the quality of Sattva, the Sattva Gana. And we will be uh, we will be subjected to even lot of psychological troubles, we will be even subjected to lot of shocks and uh, we will be obsessed with our own peculiar gunas or habits and for example like building walls around people and we do not want to interact with people and there are hundreds of other obstacles out there. So, so this is the problem that arises in our daily life if we do not uh, practice or if we do not take this forward if we do not maintain this Satvaguna. So one of the best solution or the suggestion which I would personally uh, recommend is that to worship gods, to worship gods and gods. So that is one of the thing which strengthens the mind, that is one of the thing which strengthens us psychologically and which gives a strength of the mind to face challenges in our daily life and again uh, if we surrender ourselves to God, so that is again one of the uh, big asset in spiritual life. So if we practice all these things, if we practice all these things, so it strengthens the quality of sattva. 
So continuing with the quotation, so Swami Vivekananda says, creation is not a making of something. It is a struggle to regain the equilibrium. As when atoms of cork are thrown to a bottom of a pail of water and rush to rise to the top singly or in clusters. So the three gunas as we have seen, even in the previous classes we have discussed this many a time. So the three gunas, if they are in equilibrium, then the creation doesn't exist. The creation won't come into being. So only because of the imbalance in the three gunas between Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, the creation come into exist. The creation come into being. For example, because according to this Sankhya philosophy, if we see in that in that particular philosophy, because of the imbalance of the gunas, we find Prakriti is modifying itself into Buddhi, and further Buddhi it modifies into Ahankara, and further this Ahankara it modifies itself into Manas, and further there are uh, this Ahankara transforming itself into uh, the five sense organs, the five uh, Karmendriyas the Tanmatras and the gross objects that we see in our daily life. So all the creation that we see around in life is due to the transformation of the three gunas. So only because of the imbalance in the equilibrium that exists uh, in Prakriti, we find all the creation. And uh, we find ourselves operating, we find this pure Purusha operating in conjunction with this Prakriti. And that is why we feel the impact of the three gunas in our daily life, which is very obvious. So, um, we have to keep in mind that because of the imbalance in Prakriti, the creation exists. The creation has come into being because of the imbalance in uh, Prakriti. So, once we attain this knowledge that I am beyond these three gunas, that once we attain this knowledge that I am different from this Prakriti. And once we attain this knowledge that I am not this body, and once we attain that complete knowledge, that Jnana, we, uh, we attain this freedom. So that is the goal of the spiritual life. The goal of the spiritual life, according to this Sankhya philosophy, is to separate ourselves from Prakriti. Where is the goal, again, according to Vedanta? The goal is to find the oneness with Brahman. So, so the challenge, one of the key challenges, as we discussed in this class, is to transcend these three gunas. So, how uh, we are going to uh, this maintain this sattvic uh, quality of life, and how we are going to attain this jnana. So, the attainment of jnana and uh, the quality of sattva guna is interrelated. So, only the sattva guna can lead us to knowledge. Whereas the Tamoguna and the Rajoguna is not going to lead us towards uh, salvation or liberation or this Nyana. Only the Satoguna can take us forward. So only it can lead to knowledge. Therefore, we place more emphasis on this particular uh, Guna. That is why they are interrelated. So coming back to Swami Vivekananda's quotation, he says, A little evil is the source of life. The little wickedness that is in the world is very good. For when the balance is regained, the world will end. Because sameness and destruction are one. When this world goes, good and evil go with it. But when we can transcend this world, we get rid of both good and evil and have bliss. So the idea here is that, that life it comes with a package, it comes with the package of both goodness and evil. So a certain level of evil that accompanies life and that is because of the imbalance of the gunas. And that is the reason Swamiji says, a little evil is the source of life here. The little wickedness that is in the world is very good. Otherwise life doesn't exist. Otherwise we won't be facing all the challenges in our daily lives. Otherwise we won't be struggling all these things. We would have all attained this jnana and life. We would have transcended all this good and evil. So all those challenges are presented 
it was in this very life because of the imbalance of the gunas and again the imbalance of the gunas is accompanied by this little evil so because of the existence of tamaguna and rajaguna swami vivekananda he says that this little evil it, it existed so the good and evil or pairs that they exist and uh, the evil if if you have read uh, swami vivekananda's lectures for example karma yoga uh, there is a lot of discussion around good and evil he says that evil can't be eradicated completely if if evil can be eradicated completely then uh, vice versa that goodness also then uh, has to go along with it and uh, he says that when this world goes good and evil go with it and when we transcend this world we get rid of both good and evil and have bliss so this is the goal of spiritual life that is transcending both good and evil that is transcending all the gunas so in practical terms we define it as good and evil but this good and evil uh, they are influenced or they are triggered by the change of gunas only so the goal is to transcend the good and evil and have bliss so good and evil are relative terms they exist in relation to one another and uh, uh in our daily life we find this good and evil uh, this existing very obvious and uh, this duality good and evil means not absolute good and absolute evil we, we say that relative good and relative evil and uh, so they exist in the world and the find the goal of the spiritual life is to transcend beyond them and have bliss so not to be affected by the three gunas and it is not to be affected by the good and evil so our daily uh, spiritual practice it must include that uh, we must not be affected by the, the things that is thrown to us by prakriti we must not be affected by the challenges that is thrown to us by prakriti we must always maintain the balance uh, suppose at a particular situation particular circumstances we must not be thrown out of balance we must try to sustain the balance we must remain unaffected by it so that is a sign of spiritual maturity that is a sign of uh, spiritual life suppose if we are constantly uh, thrown out by the external challenges uh, and if we constantly react to all the things that prakriti presents to us that means we are affected by the good and evil so the challenge is to strengthen ourselves strengthen the body and mind and not to be affected by the good and evil that comes to us and is to maintain that moment maintain that particular moment and think about it without reacting and then finally take a good judgment based on the particular situation or thing so constant reaction or constantly thrown out of balance by the challenges presented by prakriti is a sign of weakness and is a sign of uh, uh what do you call not an sound judgment so all these things um, we have we face in our daily life everybody faces these things in our daily life so we must make sure that we must not be affected by good and evil finally we take all the spiritual practices which is prescribed uh, in our spiritual traditions we practice them day in and day out we follow all the procedures spiritual procedures we take them up and finally we enjoy this bliss which is which is our own so right now we are preventing ourselves from enjoying this bliss our mind prevents ourselves from enjoying this bliss so our mind presents a lot of obstacles to us so let us remove that obstacle and let us feel this divine bliss so let us all pray to the holy trio shri ram krishna swami vivekananda and sharda devi so let us pray to them so let us taste this divine bliss which is our own so let us attain this state let us attain the state wherein we achieve this complete freedom complete knowledge and complete oneness so we shall uh, continue with this class in uh, uh, after a week so we shall continue with this so we shall uh, finish the class today om shanti 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 
हरि ओम तत्सत श्री राम कृष्णार्पण मस्तू